So what I've been pondering for quite some time now it seems is can I create a trambience light that works like a gel light? I was going to set this scene up then to show you what I mean by a gel light and then we'll get on to true ambience lighting. So I'm just creating a crude interior so it's inside a cube. I'm going to modify the document setup just to decrease the render size to make things render a little bit more efficiently and I'm going to put something in my scene. I don't know what yet. Let's see, probably one of these Stanford Dragons favour those. I won't be able to put in a very high resolution mesh, it won't really be necessary. So here's a subject of my scene pop it in one corner to get an idea. Uh, I'm going to set the atmosphere off so I don't have any risk of light pollution from the haze. Set the global ambient up because I'll be using that to drive some effects. I can now see the dragon is glowing in the nano preview so I know that the material here needs uh, the ambient taking out of it because I want everything to render fully black and I don't need the sunlight. So for setting up for trambient rendering which is what I will be doing in the end I don't want any interference. To start with though, I'm just going to introduce a ordinary light source, uh, lift it up somewhere into my scene, edit it and use a gel. I'm going to use an image, this one. Okay, this image comes from one of Horrors and Mind's products and I'm just using this because it's a 360 degree panoramic render so it should be suitable for spherical mapping. When you load a gel in, it uh, defaults to bizarrely sign your soidal mapping mode so I'll just change that over to spherical. The only significant thing when using a light gel is that it's in the diffuse channel. You don't need to worry about these other settings. So there you can see you've got some light output from this. I'm going to increase the light output. I don't need to worry about specular output because there's nothing in my scene that uses specular output. So I'll just check out of that, switch to the camera and let's have a little render. OK, so I've got this light source in the scene projecting this image onto the inside of my cube walls. But I can't really see the subject of my scene. There's a little bit of dragon lit up there, but it's hard to make out. Now I'm going to switch over now to premium effects and reduce the raise per pixel to start with to 4, so things preview more quickly. Select true ambience, true ambience scatter correction, boost light, and reduce the maximum ray depth to 4. So it'll render a bit faster. So that means that the light gathering process will take four steps before it returns black. Uh, because we're on an interior, when the light is gathered, so let's say just this pink pixel on the dragon's back, randomly sends out a probe, sees this surface, and it'll do that from that surface up to four times, and it will gather light. So this has been lit directly with the light source, so it'll have a light value. That will be attenuated by the grey of this wall. And when it gets back to the grey of the dragon, it'll be dimmer still. So that explains why things are still a bit dim in this scene, even though we've used boost light and we've got fairly bright outputs. Uh, the, the overall effect will be reducing the light output. You can see here that the gel light's rather sharp, but the trambience lighting is very vague and grainy. The graininess are because of the low pixel sampling. We use higher levels for the final render. But what I want to do is achieve this kind of effect with the gel light but only using true ambient rendering. So here's the idea. First of all I'm going to convert this into a true ambience light source. I'm just going to change the family here. This has no significance. It just shows that it's no longer an ordinary light source. So I'm going to edit this light source, get rid of the output here, switch it to ambience. It's only the surface we're concerned with in the ambience it becomes a light source and modify the material. So I'm not going to use diffuse because the surface is no longer lit. There's no other diffuse source of light in this scene. So I'm going to use ambient and because I've got global ambient set up I can set the ambient output up. I'll just take the blob out of transparency for now. So it's just an ambient surface and it's spherically mapped. So check out of there check out of there, switch to the scene, see what that gives us. Oh, it's very dark, you can see one or two pixels maybe. So if I increase the size of this light source, make sure it's not crossing the dragon at any point, that will increase the surface area and then you can see there's a little bit more light but out of this gel light there's not really enough light arriving to light the scene. However, there wouldn't be a problem uh, if it wasn't for the fact that I can't actually increase the amount of global ambient light to drive this effect but I can get around this by modifying the material and putting a hyper texture in the ambient output so if I click on the blob here and then use the process that uh, I've used in the previous video so go to basic select check blue check out of that go into the textual editor 
turn off color and bump click on the corner blobs to open these controls go into noise turn the square into distance squared mode into minimum octaves into one frequency into minus one that creates a very high output negative value in the alpha channel. If I drag that over to the second component and use the blend mode of difference and then modify the second component so it has a nothing output, uh, the difference between a highly negative and nothing is highly positive. Can't see a difference in the final combination yet. Take the component from component 2, put it in component 3, select the blend mode of multiply, select this component and use the sine filter reset the sine filter and modify it so that it's a flat line and then gradually wind it down. Watch the final combination you're looking for a stripy colored output value with nice broad stripes and that indicates that you're producing an out of range value but it's only just slightly out of range which will mean it looks more manageable. You want to check at this point you can use this control here to change the levels if you can't it means that you've not got alpha say, scaling selected so click on alpha scaling and then you can use that to control the level of ambient so it's in a useful range so if we give it I'll say a level of 2 it be nice and bright so this now should be a sufficient light source to light our scene so you can see we're getting some output but a little bit strangely the top of this Bryce cube is not lit even though the other sides are this is a problem with Bryce primitive so if I go to this cube go to the attributes and just rotate it very slightly that seems to solve that little bug I'll just go back to my light source here and then give that a render and you should see now that the ceiling is lit it's all looking a bit noisy and there's no obvious images of the the gel that's being projected onto the wall you can see there's variation in color but uh, it's not really not really fantastic so what I'm going to do is going to render options and increase the rays per pixel so we get a better view of what's going on here and you can see that I'm going to have to increase the light output from this surface so edit that go into procedural and take it up to 4 see that gives me a bit more light to work with right so the the issue at this point is that although there is some effect of the gel light you can see we've got an orange color on this side and, and blues and purples here it's so diffuse because of the distance between the surface which is what's providing the light and the wall which is what's gathering it so the path the camera looks at the wall and then this pixel has to decide what color it is working in trambians it sends off a probe randomly from this surface it might touch any portion of this light source it might touch this wall and then go to the light source but uh, there's no guarantee that it's going to pick up the pattern and create a solid image. If we briefly switch back to pre 7.1 true ambience, so this is a focused scattering in the selection here, you will get more imaging because the light gathering process is biased and tends to favor the normal direction. But the, the, the images, although stronger, create hot spots and areas where you don't get proper shadow definition, shadow formation. So all that that's an interesting effect. It's not really what I was looking for. So I'll go back into render options and switch back to scattering correction, which is the most uh, physically accurate uh, rendering for trambians we've got at the moment. The the trick here is to remember that this material for the light source, although not visible directly through the camera, is visible to trambians and acts as a material, which means we can use optical properties on it. So if I give a diffuse color of fully white so when I make it transparent there's no uh, drop off as the light travels through so the light gathering probes will travel through this material see the other side that's lit up with ambient and that will provide a lot more light so if I reduce the light levels now I can I can use that to create more general light but now there's no pattern focusing because what you have is this portion of the light source and that portion of the bright source getting added together as it travels through. However, if we introduce optical property of refraction, you can turn this into a lens and it will focus the pattern onto the walls. Now you'll still get some picked up off the surface by direct route, but you'll also get light that's been focused through it because of its optical properties, which, because it's a sphere, handily focuses the pattern that's on it in the ambient channel onto the walls for us. Now you get um, you'll get a, a more 
tightly focused pattern, the closer you get whatever you're trying to get the pattern on to the surface of the sphere. But if you cross the surface of the sphere with any of your geometries, you will see the edge. You'll see the surface will be like a cut. Because the light levels inside the sphere will be a lot higher than those on the outside because all the surfaces face in. So be careful that your projecting light source in this case is not touching any of the geometry in your scene and it's completely contained. But as you can see, or hopefully you'll be able to see when the render is completed, there are obvious patterns forming on the wall here. So for final rendering then, and then I'll stop wittering on, you will see that's how the render time is for the, the full raised per pixel. And just take a moment to get there. Okay then, about half an hour. So not the cheapest effect to achieve. You can try reducing the a maximum ray depth so that will have an impact on the quality of your shadows around your objects so you've got to strike a happy balance between the, the amount of times you allow it to light gather and the render time so I think this is a fair balance that's the end of the video then I hope you found that interesting useful and that you'll experiment with this effect in your own renders